Blender is a very powerful tool that can be used to create extremely realistic animations that seem almost indistinguishable from real life. However, as anybody who's tried to learn it knows, Blender is very hard to learn. It takes a lot of time, energy, and effort just to create your first animation, and so that's why I'm sitting down to create this video. This is honestly kind of the video I wish I had back in time. And basically, I'm just going to show you the 7 best ways to not only make Blender easier, but also speed up the amount of time it takes you to complete a process within your workflow. These tips have personally saved me hours upon hours of time, and of course, if you then calculate that in terms of money, it has saved me thousands of dollars as well, which of course, sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. So I'm creating this video in hopes that it can help one of you out, and hopefully help you to achieve the same things that I have too. Now, the first way of doing this is actually quite interesting. I really feel like every single Blender user out there has a specific way they like to approach creating 3D scenes, and of course more specifically in terms of the layout of their workflow. For example, for me, I like to have the 3D viewport on the top right where I can kind of look through and adjust all the elements of my scene and then preview them in solid mode. Then to the left of that, I like to have a workspace in rendered view from the camera's perspective so I can see what the final image will look like. Then at the bottom left, I have the UV panel so I can preview textures and adjust them accordingly. And finally, at the bottom right, I then have the shader editor where I can adjust the material settings for those UV maps. This I found is just the best way to maximize the results I get from using Blender. Now, here's where the problem came into play. Every time I created a new file, I found myself setting up this exact same workspace over and over and over again. So instead of doing this, what you can go ahead and do is set up the file in the way you want it to be set up, then go to File, Defaults, and click Save Startup File. And basically what this means is every time you create a project from now on, it's going to be automatically put into this exact layout we have chosen, which truly saves so much time and makes it so much easier to hop in to creating a new 3D scene. Now the next way of speeding up your Blender workflow is to use the Quick Favorites menu. So some of you may know how this works, but if you don't, here's what it does. If there's a specific thing you keep finding yourself doing inside of your Blender workflow, for example, uh, let's say you're applying a subdivision modifier to some type of object and you keep doing that to different objects inside of your scene, instead what you can do is when you're about to add the subdivision surface modifier, go ahead and right click and click Add to Quick Favorites. And now anytime I'm in Blender and I want to apply a subdivision surface modifier to an object, all you have to do is click Q and then that option is going to be right there. I can just click it and it's going to do that task. And the great thing about this is you can save as many options as you want into this quick favorite menu. And so anytime you need to recall that action, you can just click Q and do the task desired. Now the third way of speeding up your Blender workflow will probably come as a shock to most of you because it is as simple as learning Python. Now you're going to have to hear me out on this one. Look, we all use Blender add-ons inside of our work. In fact, I'm going to touch on that a little bit later. And as most of you know, all add-ons in Blender run throughout Python. It is the scripting language that is used to make all these add-ons capable of functioning inside of Blender. Now, what this means is you can actually speed up your Blender workflow a lot by learning Python. And here's why. A lot of the times when I like to create materials inside of Blender, it's kind of the exact same thing. This isn't specifically for up-close objects, but when I have something kind of in the medium to background of the scene, I'll often add in an image texture, plug that into the base color, the roughness, and the bump, and then throw in a color ramp and bump node through the roughness and bump, obviously. And then I'll do a little bit of adjusting there, tune down the specular, and that's pretty much it. And while for a single material, this may not take a lot of time, if you multiply this through a lot of materials for a lot of objects, for a lot of 3D scenes, for a lot of projects, it really does start to add up. And what learning Python did is it made it so that instead of having to keep doing this, I was able to code a simple Blender add-on that all I had to do was click one button and it sets it all up for me. And now I've actually started selling this up on Gumroad, it's helped out a ton of people, and it's helped bring in a bit of extra profit for me as well. So yeah, I'd highly recommend you start learning Python because the results you're going to get from it are just unfathomable. Okay, now the fourth way of speeding up your Blender workflow is using the auto smooth function inside of Blender. Earlier, I talked about using the subdivision surface modifier on a 3D model. And what this does is it smooths out that model by adding in additional polygons and vertices to that 3D model. And from afar, it may seem very smooth. But when you start scrolling in, you're going to notice it's very bumpy and quadratic. And the way you fix this is, of course, right-clicking and clicking Shade Smooth 
to make the object smooth. However, if you shade smooth an object that's not supposed to look smooth, it starts to look like this. It just looks messy and unclean and generally unrealistic. So in that case, you just leave it with flat shading. But the problem starts to occur when you have an object that is both smooth in some areas and flat in others. And so that's where the auto smooth function comes into play. Let's say part of this object needs to be flat and part of it needs to be smooth. What I can do is I can right click and click shade auto smooth. And this is going to smooth shade the parts that need to be smooth and of course, flat shade the parts that need to be flat. This has not only saved a ton of time from having to go into the auto smooth properties but it also helps to increase the quality of your models. Now, the next way is going to sound like kind of a duh to most of you, but it's to use Blender add-ons. As many of you know, one of the main things I cover on this YouTube channel is different Blender add-ons you can use, because not only does it add in a ton of functionality into Blender, but it also will save you tons and tons of time. So if you are looking for Blender add-ons, I would highly recommend you check out the Blender market, as that's where most of the Blender add-ons are stored. However, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the things I cover on this YouTube channel are just add-ons. So if you want to find the best of the best when it comes to add-ons, and add-ons that will just truly increase your productivity, make sure to subscribe so you can learn about the most recent and useful add-ons for Blender. Now the next thing I'm going to recommend also might sound like a duh, but trust me, it's very useful too. And that's as simple as downloading assets online. My top three recommendations at the moment, though of course this is subject to change, are Sketchfab, Polyhaven, and then probably Quixel Bridge. All three of these work extremely well. Polyhaven is completely free, Sketchfab is mostly free with a couple of paid assets, and then Quixel Bridge is paid, but there's a couple of workarounds to get it for free. Now, I would highly recommend you check out Andrew Price's 3D Architecture video. And the reason for this is he talks about one, why assets are so useful and practical for 3D scenes, but two, he also just shows you how to implement them very, very well. Now, as we reach the end of the video, I want to tell you about the final way to speed up your Blender workflow. I've created a lot of 3D assets in the past. I've downloaded tons of them online, but a lot of the times when I download stuff online in particular, they're not immediately perfect once downloaded. A lot of the times I'll have to go in and retexture the model, maybe delete some unneeded polygons, or even adjust the rig of a character model. And instead of having to repeat this process every single time you download something online, what you can do is let's say you have it in some type of 3D file you remember you created a while back, you can just go to file, append, click on the file, go to objects, and then select the object you want to import into this file from the other one. And this is just undeniably useful. So I highly recommend you get used to pending in assets and linking them and all that encapsulates. And who knows, maybe you'll even add it to your quick favorites. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've learned or extracted something out of this video. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe, maybe drop a like and comment your favorite uh, tip or whatever. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.